Hey guys, you want to the Star Turtle? This is my review for Game of Thrones season eight. Sorry, season six, episode eight. No one. And of course, there will be spoilers. So if you don't like that, go ahead and and uh, go to another video or something. YouTube's a big place. You'll find something you like. Now, a lot of people don't like this episode. A lot of people are saying that it's it's the worst episode of the season since the since the, not finale, the premiere. I wouldn't go that far. I, I think that this is actually a... It's not, the, not a great episode, but it's still a good episode. It's better than Blood of My Blood, which, in my opinion, is the worst episode aside from the premiere. Where not much happened at all. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of cock teasing and blue balls, this kind of that kind of stuff. We did not get to see a lot of the stuff we wanted to see. But... There's still, at least a lot of shit still did happen. So, let's start with Arya and Bravos. Yeah, it's true. This whole storyline does seem kind of pointless now. They probably could have done a better job with it. But at least it's all behind us now. Basically, Arya... Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the last episode. She got stabbed because she was stupid. I guess she wasn't expecting, them, expecting the the, the uh, faceless men to actually come after her. I thought she, thought, that's what she just let, let the letter go, I guess. But I, I feel like it would have been better if, she, if that old woman who was the waif was being disguised that was actually a real old woman who the waif was actually using a distraction. And so Iris was suspicious, suspicious thinking it might have been a trap and all of a sudden the waif comes from behind while she's distracted by the old woman or something like, something like that. That would have made a little more sense and at least it wouldn't have made Arya look as stupid as she looked. Because she looked pretty damn stupid. Uh, I think I don't know for sure if she lost her coin. All that coin she was gonna, she was gonna, she was gonna um, pay that 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 um, sailor to, to take her back to Westeros. But she ends up back with the theater troop because there's nowhere else to go, particularly with Lady Crane. And get to know a little, little bit more about Lady Crane. Not that it matters because she's about to die. <laughs> and of course, after about a day or two of recovering, um, the Wraith comes back and. Murders Lady Crane, and Arya realizes what's happened. And instead of waiting for Arya to be, I guess the Wraith wanted wanted her to be awake so that she could actually see it coming. She didn't want to just murder her in her sleep. I guess it would be that, that guess it would be too easy because otherwise she could just she could just murder her in her sleep pretty quick. Which, but Arya still no condition for a fair fight, so she ends up running. And we had a nice little chase. And I wish she could. I wish it was a little, a little bit um, cooler. It wasn't as much parkour as we expected it there to be. And. Pretty much the wave with a couple of sections. Pretty much just wasn't really as very ninja like. She just like, like I often compare her to, to the term to her comparing her to the Terminator. Even the music to some extent. I don't know about that, but it's true. She's she's more like a brute force running through those people chasing after Arya than than just trying to like outflank her. And Arya just um, leads her back to her place where she had needle and she the door was closed. It's dark and she uses the needle to cut the candle. And the lights out, and we don't even get to see what happens next, other than the fact that Arya just barely managed to kill the wave. So even even blind, she was still even in the pitch black, she was still in pretty bad shape. And it's we never found out. I guess I guess the wave wasn't trained to fight blind like she was. I really wish we could have got at least a few sound effects and flashes of what happened, but I guess they wanted to tease us to see what would, you know, we already, we kind of already knew what really happened, and so Jacqueline Nagar, or no one, wherever the fuck he is, I don't even care who he is, he's just gonna call him the faceless man leader, um, like, just follows the trail of blood, and there's the waste face, and, um, and Arya's like, you sent him to kill me, like, yes, and now a girl is no one, and Arya's like, yeah, fuck that, I'm Arya Stark, a girl is Arya Stark, and this girl is going home. And, uh, and, and the faces leaders can't help but smile a little bit. I guess because he's, I don't know. Um, but basically the waif is dead, and so is the, so is the, so is Lady Crane, so the, the balance, the debt is, the debt is paid, so there's no, nothing keeping, keep, nothing, nothing that, um, obligates them to try and kill Arya, so they're letting her go. Yeah, I, the storyline could have. This is this is gonna how it, we all we always kind of knew this was gonna end like this. So I feel like they could have probably done a little bit more to make it more interesting throughout the course, other than just all the, the long drawn out training montages that we already seen before in Daredevil and things like it. Not entirely sure if we'll see Arya again this season. Um, we we probably we'll probably see her maybe a little bit like in episode ten. But but for now, her story on, story, story her storyline's wrapped up. In the Riverlands, the Siege of River Run. Brienne and Pod they get they they find the Lannister camp. 
Pod's like, looks like a siege, and Brienne's like, yeah, no shit. And she's, she immediately goes to go, go see Jamie, because Brienne's probably the only real friend that Jamie has. It's like, because Bron sure is telling his friend, he's more friend to Tyrion than he is to, just to Jamie. And, uh, and Cersei's, his infatuation, that's no good for him, but he, I think he even knows that, but doesn't care. So she's really the only friend he has, even though she still kind of has a thing for him, which I never liked. I don't, that kind of made her character a bit weaker, but she, she should just go back to Tormont. Now that would be good. They would be perfect for each other. But anyway, we had a brief reunion between Dron and Pod, and it's um, probably the friendliest face Bron's seen in quite a while. <laughs> Briefly trying to teach Pod how to fight dirty, and commenting about how Jamie and Brian. Um, maybe secretly desire to fuck each other, and that he would he he'd fuck Brian too. You know, just Ron being Ron. And a reminder that apparently Podrick is a ladies man. I almost forgot about that. That he was apparently so good in the sack that prostitutes refused to accept money from him. They give him the money back because he was apparently so good in bed. Okay, seriously, I think he might be his or a high because I don't I don't buy that there isn't some kind of magical explanation for how he's he's that. He did to please all those fucking prostitutes. Please them so much that they didn't accept the money. Uh, do you remember that in season three? I almost forgot about that. That happened in season three, yeah. But so I, and then Tyrion and Bronn were like, damn, damn, man, how'd you do it? I don't remember what episode that was, but that was back in season three. But yeah, this guy to be some kind of magical explanation. I, he's a Zora High or something. Anyway. But yeah, I'm um, going to see a, got to see the reunion between Bri uh, Brienne and Jamie. And Brienne's Sorry, I mean, Jamie's happy to see her, really. I mean, like I said, she's the only real friend he has, even if she doesn't feel the same, quite the same way about her as she does to him. Uh, and she's like, Brienne convinces her to let, let her go in and try to convince the Blackfish to surrender and like on the condition that he, him and his army will be allowed to leave and warns him that she'll be obliged to fight him if, if they, she fails to convince him, fails to convince the Blackfish. And, yeah... So she goes in with Pod. She tries to convince, um, remember, Cat Cat Catelyn's great uh, uncle, Blackfish, Uncle Blackfish. Um, remember, I, I keep forgetting that House um, House uh, House Tarth is, I believe, also a, river, a family of the Riverlands. So that so that so the, so her her father and the Blackfish knew each other. But Blackfish is just too damn stubborn. Just Uncle Blackfish wants to just die fighting because he's got no nothing left nothing left to lose. And honestly, he probably should have. Probably been better if he just him and his armies went over to to the north because they need all that they can get. Not that it would have mattered. They probably would, by the time they got there, the battle would have already been battle. The next episode would have probably already been over. But so, each, but we don't we don't we never get a full full on attack. Instead, Uncle Brutus shows up. Edmir, Ed, Edme, Edmir, whatever his name is, Catelyn's brother, little brother, and Jamie talks to him when he looks like when it becomes clear that, that Brienne failed. He, he basically convinces him. He's, tec he's technically still the true Lord of River Run, or at least the um, not, not well, not anymore. The Fraser Lord or, or Command River Run, but he's Lord of the House Tully. And Jamie is probably the most brutally honest we've seen him in a long time. Just saying, yeah, I, like at, at first he's like trying to like you know all that like kind of bullshit and saying, yeah, are you comfortable? Are you okay? We, we want we want to end this thing without bloodshed. But Bru Uncle Brutus isn't isn't, isn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but he's still sharp enough to realize that uh, yeah. You're just you're you're, you're trying to bullshit me. And then finally, just Jamie comes clean, like, yeah, all I care about is Cersei. I if I have to kill every Tully that ever lived, I will I will do I will, I will do that if that if that's the only way I can get back to Cersei. I'll I'll even I'll even throw your baby info, your baby boy, um, who I don't even know if he even like remember his his his, his wife was a fray. That's I don't even know if she's even he still cares about him at all. Um, cause I was like right before the red wedding that he even got married, but. But yeah, he would throw he would throw his his his, his infant son in a catapult if it, if it meant getting back to Cersei. So, uh, Edmir orders the the the, the, the Tully Bannerman in, in, in the um in the in, in River Run to open the, the the drawbridge. Despite despite what a Blackfish says, he's it's a trap and he doesn't anyway because because Uncle Bruce is the real is the real true Lord. And it's kind of a it's not just kind of a trap, but. True to his word, Jamie refuses to have anyone killed. So, Edmir just orders all the guy, all, all the Tully Bannermen to lay down their arms, and the Lannister army comes in like the Imperial Stormtrooper Corps. And they got the whole the, the Lannister song playing. It's yeah, and they even, they even force all the Tully Bannermen who have disarmed to walk over the walk, walk over the Tully flag. 
but at least they let them, at least they let them all live, so they could have done way worse. And the, and Uncle Blackfish um, t t takes Brienne and Pod to the boat so they can go escape, and he refuses to go with him. He should, but he doesn't anyway. He's, he's just too fucking stubborn. He's more stubborn than Brienne. And Jamie, when J Jamie says, and he's and he's right. But he doesn't. He, then he hasn't had a proper sword fight in years. But he'll make a fool of himself. He doesn't care. And, we, and apparently he dies. But once again off screen. That we, I don't know, maybe we'll, maybe he'll come back. But it looks like he's dead. So, and of course, Ryan and and Jamie just wave goodbye because. Tell Jamie just can't bring himself to do anything because even even though that he's serving Sansa and Sansa is an enemy of the crown he, and an enemy of Cersei, he still can't bring himself to leave. He just, he just lets him go. So yeah, I would have liked to have seen a battle, but then again, I don't think they would have had much money for it, considering how, how epic the next episode looks. And I just I don't know what's gonna happen. I hope maybe, who knows? Maybe Uncle Brutus will sh will take the Tully Bannerman and um, just go and help help um, the Starks anyway, even though they've got no weapons. But I, don't know, I doubt it. King's Landing. When when um, the High Sparrow sends his men to go take take Cersei out of the Red Keep to go see him personally, so he's like, you know what? I'm I'm sick and tired of doing what you say. I might be able to actually do anything to stop you from 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 poisoning my son and taking over the city, but you ain't taking me out of the fucking Red Keep. And when one of one of the one of the sparrows tries to tries to take care of the mountain, just looks like first of all, it looks like it's just choke him out, but then he just then he throws him on the ground and rips his fucking head and spine out, Mortal Kombat style. Still died better than Oberyn, but yeah, and the rest of the sparrows are like, you know what? Yeah, it's not worth it. So like to see more of a bloodbath, but then again, we might still get that in episode ten. And then there's a royal announcement in the throne room that Cersei almost didn't know about. Kevin, like some people were saying that Kevin and probably Pycelle are actually actually manipulating Tommen even more than the than the High Sparrow is. And that's that, that that's definitely a possibility considering how close those two have been to him compared to everyone else, even Cersei. Um, but yeah, Tommen has declared that trials by, by combat are, no, are, are, are from now on forbidden. So, Cersei's a little desperate now. Unless, of course, this is all a ploy by her and by her and Tommen that that that, that he that her and Tommen in cahoots the whole time, which I don't know. I don't think Tommen has enough resolve to actually to actually stick with her the whole time if that was the case. But he might surprise me. I highly doubt he'll be alive by the end of this by the end of this season. But if he does die, I'd really like to see him at least go out with some spine. That probably won't happen, but I hope so. And we do get one little thing about apparently this nasty old rumor, whatever it is that, and and the rumor is true according to Quiburn. And of course, we got Marine. We we, we probably see Ferris for but, but probably the last time this season. Is, it, it maybe a little bit of episode ten, but yeah, him and Terry won't be doing won't be in, won't be any scenes together anytime soon. I mean, he's like, we got to see another really, really hot red priestess. And Varys is telling Tyrion, like, yeah, you made a pack of fanatics. And yeah, razor blades may work, but they can also still very easily stab you or cut you. And Tyrion's like, yeah, well, maybe, but for now, at least it worked. And Varys is off on an expedition, and he's like, yeah, I, I don't, I'm on a secret mission, so I don't want to, it's best not to be seen leading with the famous, famous dwarf from the city. He's like, and then, then Tyrion's like, Varys, the most famous dwarf in the world. Like, which, again, that means everyone's probably going to hurt him. Of course, Tyrion probably already saw both of them anyway. I don't know, it's weird. Of course, um, Varys passed by a couple of beggars. Didn't like didn't even give them the time of day. I mean, maybe they were probably just conning them, but, I mean, I hope they were, because otherwise, I don't know, I still like seeing them. <laughs> even Tyrion didn't give him any, didn't give him any extra coins. Felt a little bad, actually, but, but, yes. So then we see we see the dwarf, the eunuch, the other eunuch, Grey Worm, and the former slave turned translator. Although you know what I mean, the really really hot it's not Masande because she's really hot. She's always but still wearing her sexy outfit, which I'm happy for. But yeah, just all of them just tr like Dentirian finally getting him to try alcohol and just trying to tell jokes and it's awkward. I mean like. Okay, yeah, none of them were funny. I, I laughed. I laughed at first when Tyrion told the first joke, and the look on the, both their faces after he told it was a little priceless. I laughed a little bit at that one, but then just kind of went on. I mean, I, I like seeing Missandei smiling and laughing, even if it's stupid, because she's really hot. But other than that, I think the scene on went a lot, went a little, was awkward. Went a lot, went on a little too long. But then the bells come and 
Mel Start, whatever they're called, chiming. And at first I thought it was the Ironborn, but no, it's a it's it's a bunch of harpy ships, um, ready just to lay siege to Marine. And next time we when we cut back to it, the city's on fire. A lot of people must be dying, and Grey Worm and Missandei are pissed at Tyrion. That they're blaming him for it. I mean, I'm not entirely sure what else could have been done. He did the best he could. If nothing else, he bought time, and it turned out to pay off because just before the night's over, Miss um, in comes Danny and, er and Drogon, and I really would have liked to have seen Drogon burn all the ships. Um, but I guess they already spent enough money on that look, and they're making look that city and that city and pyramid look on fire. It really looked like we were gonna get a nice big badass action scene, like, like kind of like Hard Home, or um, or the, or the Mountain Viper fight. But nope. It's like I said, cock teasing. But Danny certainly looks pissed. And finally, we have the Hound. And what happened last episode? I was really hoping to see more of more bloodbath again, and we did get one little cool scene. Of um, male body, including involuntarily violating of other men's asses. <laughs> but then the hound comes in, not even using a sword, just using an axe, just killing all of them. And then chase, but chasing after it was there's a couple others he's still chasing after. I forget which um, the guy with the, the mustard cloak, whatever it is. And it's like telling the last guy who's, who's, who's still dying, it's like, "Where's that guy?" He's like, "Fuck you." What was, was your last word? Fuck you. He's like. Cunt. You suck at dying, you know. And then just punches the action to his head. Like, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Cedric Lane never lacks for awesome one-liners. And then he, he meets up with Beric Dondarrion and Thor Samir from the ba Brotherhood Without Banners. Haven't seen them in quite a while. Apparently those, those, uh, Brotherhood members, those, apparently those Brotherhood members who sacked that, who sacked that, that town and killed Ray were apparently just acting on their own and disgraced the Brotherhood's name, so Dendarian and Samir are both hanging in the remembrance of them, and they, they let, they let Hound have two of them, and he just wants to hack up, like, no, you gotta hang them. We gotta let you t t hang two of them, and, yeah, then we'll just hang one. Which is more than fair, in all honesty. And then they try to convince Glane that, that, yeah, it, I, you can still redeem yourself. It's not too late. You can still join us and do some some good. And it looks like, oh, he's kind of hesitant at first. It looks like he's still taking Ray's worst heart. He may actually end up joining him. Plus, he still gets to kill a bunch of people. And seeing the Hound kill a bunch of people is never a bad thing. Still hoping we get Lady Stoneheart. We probably won't at this point. But who knows? They might still surprise us. So all in all, this was a good, if not great, episode. Better than a lot of people were saying. But still, we'll definitely... People have some valid complaints. Really would have liked to have seen the Blackfish um, live to fight another day. But he didn't. Yeah, he ran once at the Red Wedding. He didn't want to run again. Plus, the actor has commitments to other shows, so he, he couldn't afford to stay too long. Which other two is probably the main reason why they only used him for two episodes where they killed him off. They probably would have used him more if it wasn't for that. Yeah, another episode without without John and um, Sansa and Ramsey in the North. Especially Ramsey. Ramsey has, Ramsey has been seen in a while. So I hope this next episode comes, comes is worth it. But yeah, we're, we're gonna get Snow Bowl 2016 finally. So I really would, like I said, I really would like to have seen some more John and and Ramsey scenes leading up to it in this episode, especially considering how short most of the episodes have been. I got a hunch that that um, Sansa, Davos, Juan Juan, Tor maybe Tormund, and and maybe Ramsey. Are gonna be all dead by next episode. And if John dies, whether even though he says in the previews, don't to himself, Mills, how do you don't bring me back? I think he thinks she's gonna. She'll bring, even if he does die, she'll, she'll bring him back again, because she's his. His. She, she, oh, she, he's her last hope at this point. And I'm not entirely sure if if um if Ramsey will die, because or Tormund. A lot of people are saying Tormund's gonna die, which is precisely why I don't think he's gonna die. So many people seem to be expecting that, like, like all over the. Well, that's what that's what the rumors who say say he's gonna, say he's gonna die, but. And Ramsey, I don't know, like, after everything that's happened, like, we expected this to play out a certain way. And, like, the, the whole door of the storyline this season has been, been pretty cliche, which leads me to believe that there might be, it might, things might not play out the way we expect next episode. And, yeah, I think Juan Juan's gonna die simply because all the CGI they're gonna need, because I'm pretty sure by the, at the very end of this, of the episode 10, um, the White Walkers are gonna breach the wall, and plus the dragons are on the way, and with all the CGI they're gonna need for the dragons and the White Walkers, they're not gonna be able to afford Wan Wan, so I have a feeling they're gonna kill him off this episode, next episode too, just because they, just, just like they killed off all the wolves. Speaking of which, where the fuck is Ghost? Anyway, alright, I will see you guys in a couple days for Snow Bowl. 
2016.